yeah, after the lunch break, we continue with my boring presentation about how to get your guitar sound with uh, open source and free software done. Um, yeah, I, th I think uh, a lot of you are more into the keys and knobs and buttons, but I'm more like um, a guitar or strings guy, and so um, I was looking for for a solution to um, to to use open source software to um, simulate or um, add a sound to to my guitar. Um, so a quick overview: what we are going to discover here is um, a quick introduction, and um, then I will um, introduce you to the Pi Sound um, hat. Um, that's a uh, uh, audio um, interface for Raspberry Pi computers and um, then we will um, go into the software that is driving this interface on the Raspberry Pi, it's called Patchbox OS and uh, finally the Mod EP which is kind of a spin-off uh, of the Mod UI and Mod Host software developed by the Mod Audio company and um, yeah, we, we need some peripherals to, to have our guitar fun. We are, as guitarists, we are used to pedals and switch sounds uh, with our foot, so we need some peripherals. And uh, finally, I will uh, demonstrate um, how to use the uh, Raspberry Pi and the Pi sound with the Multi-P software. So first of all, um, yeah, I'm a guitarist uh, since the age of 13, so... Um, yeah, I started with um, with solid state and uh, tube amplifiers and uh, analog and digital effects. Um, this is what I I was used to. Um, but then I think it was around 2019. Um, I I tried the um, Mod Duo X, um, which is a robust um, case. Um, running, um, I think it's an Arduino chip, and um, on top of that, there's the um, Mod UI running with um, a kind of a virtual paddle board, and that was very appealing to me. And I tried it, but um, soon I, I yeah, I, w I wasn't satisfied because um, it was it wasn't hacky enough. <laughs> it, it's a robust solution if, if you're going on stage and it works very well and stable. Um, but I was interested in some other features like networked audio and so on. Um, and the mod platform was not um, appealing to to this kind of um, exploring. Yeah. So what is Pi Sound? Pi Sound is an um, an audio interface, as I said, you can see it in the picture. Um, it has ultra low noise op amps um, for ADC and DAC, and it can um, work at sample rates up to 192 kilohertz. And um, you got a gain and volume knob on the top side and an input clip. LED, so you can see um, if your guitar has too much output volume, you can adjust to, um, yeah, don't overdrive your sounds just before you are going to overdrive it with your effects you want to apply. Um, then we got a stereo uh, jack input and output. Um, so um, today I, I use the um, input just um, with a, a mono cable, but uh, you could also um, use a kind of a splitter cable and Y cable so you can connect two instruments like guitar and bass or you can of course use a microphone. The input is sensitive enough to um, be used with microphones and um, yeah, you, you have a stereo output so you can get the wide um, soundscapes uh, of modulation effects like delay and uh, flanger chorus and so on. And um, for the guys who are more familiar with keys and synths, uh, you got a MIDI input and output for um, yeah, legacy MIDI devices. It's a Dean 5, uh, uh, Dean 5 female connector. So, and um, 
And the Raspberry Pi um, can be run with the Patchbox OS um, software. That's um, kind of a Raspberry Pi OS spin-off that is um, already equipped with the real-time kernel, so you get very low latencies. Um, uh, and there um, is a yeah, simplified jack setup so you can uh, choose uh, your sound card. You can you can use the Patchbox OS without the Pi sound. You can use an uh, USB audio interface and um, can set up Jack to use it with, with the USB audio interface as well. Um, and you have a MIDI Auto, which is an automatical connecting software to um, get your MIDI. Um, USB MIDI devices into the Mod UI and Mod Host platform, so you can automatically automatically um, use it for connecting inside the UI. Um, and you you got a Wi-Fi access point, um, which is very nice because uh, actually at the moment um, my notebook is connected to the Raspberry Pi via Wi-Fi. Um, it's just for the control to um, interact with the UI. Um, but it makes it very convenient, so you don't have to to um, use um, a network cable, or you are not dependent on another Wi-Fi to um, be able to get to the UI. And um, the Patchbox OS works with modules, and one of them is the Mod EP module. Um, there are other modules. I won't go into those today. Um, there are modules uh, for piano. Um, works and so on. Uh, today we are going to explore the Modi P module. So the Modi P module is um, basically uh, built upon the Mod UI and Mod Host, as I mentioned already. Um, it's a virtual pedal board, which you uh, which you will see next, <laughs> and um, you have uh, over 300 LV2 plugins available in. In, in, in a very beautiful canvas, and you can like virtually um, set uh, your uh, effects and connect them. And um, there's a yeah um, a cloud platform where you can get those plugins from. It's called Patch Storage, and um, I think there are other devices who can connect to the platform. It's not only for the uh, Pi Sound or Modi P software. Um, yeah, and you can map your controls via MIDI, uh, so you can uh, do some, uh, you can use a USB um, MIDI controller and um, yeah, then uh, like uh, MIDI Learn, you can map your controls to, to a um, food switch or, or a expression pedal or something like that. And um, <laughs> for that, you you need a food switch like this one that is uh, shown here. It's uh, the same that is lying in front of me just now. I took a picture to to um, to the ease of use for the stream. And um, the Pi sound or the Modi P is not only restricted to guitar and bass bass sounds, but um, also you can use it for keys. Um, I will show you that later. But my primary um, intent is to show you the guitar and um, bass sounds you can use uh, with the Modi P software. So let's have a look. I um, constructed um, a pedal board. Uh, oh, you can't see that. Okay, sorry. Um, I have just to switch it over and here we are let's take this to full screen oh, you can still see. Ah, I think I have to stop the presentation for this hmm. okay let me Ah, okay, here we are. Okay, I have to change the monitor setup. Just a sec, hold on. Yeah, that's better. 
So, okay, now we can see the canvas. And um, I have some, some effects um, on my pedal board. Um, we can listen to how that sounds. I um, crafted some different sounds, like this is a normal clean sound. Um, at the moment, we are just applying the um, amplifier here. We can zoom in like this. Oh, no, here. And then we can explore the canvas. There's an um, amplifier called Fat Frog. And um, we can interact with the knobs here um, in this view, but we can also enter like a sub setup page and adjust the settings here with the mouse. Um, but we could also use this little knob and map it to MIDI to um, adjust the settings. Um, but primarily I, I use the pedal just to switch effects on and off and get my setup uh, right before playing. Yeah, so at the moment it's just a fat frog sound without any other effects pedals applied. Um, you can see the tuner on the left side. You can check if the guitar is tuned. Yeah, it seems like it is. Yeah, and um, um, yeah, let's let's explore some of the effects pedals. We got a tube screamer like pedal with a, uh, with a um, slide overdrive sound. We can use or. Um, if we are more into the heavy sounds, there's a sound, uh, in a, an effect called Metal Zone. It's more dirtier, more greedier. And um, yeah, we can crank it up some more. There's an effects uh, pedal that I like very much. It's called the infamous hip to b I can show you the detail page. And uh, it has some um, predefined um, presets um, and it sounds yeah very interesting I think it's a kind of a bit crusher fuzz pedal hybrid and it kind of starves the sound makes very interesting noises um, yeah maybe um, you are more like the the clean guy and uh, like to Use some chorus sounds like the 80s. We will have another presentation next to mine. I think the chorus is an 80s sound, original. And um, yeah, Flanger, of course, too. Yeah, we can have a lot of fun with that. Or what do we have here? Ah, tremolo. Yeah, and uh, we, 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 of course, we can use the pedals together like this. So we have the cranky hip to infamous hip to B, and uh, yeah, use it with the um, tube screamer imitate. Um, yeah, and um, so for example, um, if you want to map like this here, Bolly Delay isn't um, already mapped to, to a foot switch, so I can just uh, click here and set MIDI, save, and then I press my switch, and then it can be controlled with it. So that's a really nice platform. You can have uh, much fun with it. There are a lot of plugins you can see here on the um, bottom, um, we can go through it and see all of the plugins um, that are uh, listed alphabetically. Or we can go into the categories like control voltage, I think it's more for the synth guys, or delays, uh, distortions. There are, th there are a lot of distortion pedals. Um, some of them are very interesting, some of them are very cranky. Dynamics and um, 
generate the plugins. We can, um, for example, use synths and uh, other generators like piano sounds and so on. Uh, simulators, um, for example, we have the IDA X. Um, this is a modeling amp, I think, which uses um, AI to generate the sound. Um, we would need some neural model um, to to have a specific um, amp that works here, but we may just connect our input to it and see what happens. So this is like the preset. We can play with it. Adjust the sound. I don't know what uh, we should we should explore here. Um, yeah. Crank input. No, I I don't want. <laughs> Uh, this wasn't uh, planned, so yeah. Um, then um, there are some utilities which are very handy. Like um, yeah, I, I found that um, for example, you you got a distortion pedal. Like um, oh yeah, there are some of the uh, fuzz pedals. Like uh, which one was it here? Uh, Guitarix Fuzz Face JH2. And um, yeah, sometimes those fast pedals only have two um, controls, the fast level and the output level. And sometimes uh, it's difficult because um, you can't get the output level low enough for the amount of effect you want to use. And then uh, you can kind of work around it and um, have uh, in your chain like this is the normal chain for all the effects that uh, can handle with your volume. And um, yeah, you go in there, sorry. Oh, so, and then you have like uh, a side chain and to compensate for the volume um, that is too loud or too, too, um, too low, you can uh, use just a gain plug in and get back to your chain before and then you just map this switch box to one of your foot pedals and then you can switch in between those change, uh, chains. So um, yeah, you have the ability to, um, to build chains and um, yeah, work around some, some, um, some um, some details that are not that um, robust. And um, if you're not the guitar guy, if you're more into the keys, um, yeah, the PySound or PySound and ModiP platform may appeal to, to you too. I, I got here a key. I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a piano player, so excuse me for um, not playing that, <laughs> that well. Um, but um, just for demonstration purposes, um, you can also um, search here, and uh, there are a piano. There's a piano plugin which will be connected with via MIDI. And then we got the audio outputs connected here. So and then. <laughs> can play some MIDI uh, piano sounds. We could also adjust it. We uh, might want to mix if, if we are using the Pi sound and uh, ModiP platform with uh, more instrumentalists, more musicians. We might, we might uh, want to um, mix those sounds and adjust volumes. So we might use here a mixer and then uh, feed all those sounds in there and then go further um, or if you if you're more interested in synth sounds there is of course there are synths like am synth 
I think this is rather simple. And like I introduced before, the A MIDI auto automatically connects the um, gear to to this MIDI input on the canvas. And yeah, we can play around with it and uh, have some fun. Yeah. Um, ah, okay. And um, the plugins you can install via um, the so-called patch storage. Um, I think it won't connect because uh, the Raspberry Pi is not connected to the internet at this location. But here you would see um, a lot of the plugins and um, uh, for for demonstration purposes, I I just installed all of the plugins here um, to have the whole bandwidth. You can see right now there are 346 plugins we can use, and um, yeah, it's it's a lot. It's like in its own universe to um, play here, and. I find it uh, very appealing because um, we have the Raspberry Pi computer with uh, four USB in interfaces, USB um, connectors, so we can use a lot of MIDI equipment, USB MIDI devices. Um, we have uh, the inputs for guitar or microphone for bass, and so on, and um, it's it's very hacky. You can can you can almost do anything on uh, which you can do on your computer as well, and that was. Uh, the tiny little difference that the mod platform, the mod devices, does not offer. For a long time, they, they don't have the ability to, to just um, save files on the device. I, I know now they have the ability, but it was a feature that wasn't available for a long time, or um, there was an experimental, and I think it's a still experimental feature to, to use um, the um, NetJack um, capabilities, because uh, inside of the um, of the um, mod device is just the um, Jack sound server running, and you can connect uh, two Jack sound servers via network with uh, the NetJack implementation, and that's very interesting because um, with this uh, Pi sound, um, I can. Um, I can use the, the Raspberry Pi with the Pi sound connected with an Ethernet cable to my router and my notebook connected to, to the router with an um, Ethernet cable as well. And then I can um, use the Pi sound uh, like an outboard um, audio interface that is connected via Ethernet. And that is very interesting because, um, yeah, you, you are connecting to Jack sound servers and uh, you can you can have much longer distances like about 100 meters um, and you can play with it and if uh, the capabilities of the Raspberry Pi are too too less uh, if you if you run into a bottleneck or you're using a lot of effects and you can see the CPU usage here in the right bottom um, and the RAM usage, and if, if if those are exceeding, you can just connect it and run the um, plugins on your computer. So the Raspberry Pi is just like a dumb audio inter and interface for input and output. And yeah, that's that was one of the reasons I I wanted to explore another platform. And yeah, I think that would be it. And now it's time for you to ask questions. Tune in your sounds, uh, thoughts. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, I have the first question. Ah, okay. <laughs> How long would it take to set up a system like yours from the ground up? Just I'm um, I'm looking to buy this thing, and how quickly am I ready to play? Uh, for this demonstration purposes, it took just an evening. Okay. You flash the patch box OS um, on the SD card, and then yeah, you have to click on each plugin and say install. And <laughs> so it's about 346 times. 
click install. That, that's, yeah, that's, but you can do that. <laughs> it's 2023, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea about the exact amount of latency that this kind of setup would produce? Yeah, um, the setup um, right now is uh, with the Jack server is 128 samples, uh, two periods, and 48 kilohertz. So it's about 6.3. If I ca if I calculate it right. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can go much lower. Um, I've experienced in my, in my um, tests um, that you can even use 32 samples. So you can get to just about one millisecond. Okay, thank you. Quite well. Um, CPU limits and RAM limits are do you know if the Python works out of the box with the new Raspberry Pi 5, which is, I don't know, it's like better CPU, faster CPU? Have you? Uh, I haven't considered it now. Um, it, we can have a look at the moment. So we have this pedal board, about 10 effects and uh, simulator, and we are just about 22% CPU usage. Um, yeah, I, I think we can, we can go up to this, we can clutter all the, the virtual pedal board with effects and still not get to the limits. But yeah, if, if you're going to, to chain reverb after reverb, I think there are limits. And the Raspberry Pi 5 may be appealing, but I don't know if it's uh, supported right now. Um, officially, um, on the web page of the PySound, I think it uh, says for Raspberry Pi up to Raspberry Pi 4. But maybe interesting to test that the next time. We, uh, we do have to note that the Pi 5 is out like end of October, so mm -hmm. basically... Yes. <laughs> it's right now. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know if we can also run this canvas thingy um, without a Raspberry Pi? Can we also run it on a normal yeah, Linux? Yeah, of course. Yeah, nice. yeah it's, I, I think it's uh, basically it's a web server, and um, yeah, like a plugin host mm -hmm. and the LV2 plugins. Um, the 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 great um, work that has been done by Mod is, uh, of course, the beautiful looking shiny interfaces. Yeah, it's <laughs> so it, it appeals more like it's a real paddle board. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. If you ever tested it on uh, um, uh, earlier Raspberry Pi versions, uh, Raspberry Pi 3, are there any limitations concerning the CPU, things like that? Yeah, um, before I was using the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and uh, it's uh, yeah, it, it it works the same. I haven't um, ah okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be a good experience. <laughs> um, so back to the question, um, earlier Raspberry Pi versions. I, I think um, Raspberry Pi 2, it, it would not be that capable, but Raspberry Pi 3, I use it with uh, Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. There's, this works as well, and... Um, I haven't encountered limits for my purposes, but I'm using it like a pedal board uh, for the primary purposes. So, Hi, 
Hi. Um, I was wondering if the the patch that you create on the mod EP would be compatible with uh, with the mod devices like uh, Mod Duo X or Mod Dwarf or. Mm, I haven't tested that, but um, the paddle boards are stored, and I think it's a simple JSON file. So I think it might be possible to TTL. It, okay, it, it's a TTL file, um, but I think you could just grab that file and. Does MuddyP also has the 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 network functionality like the Mud devices have, like sharing pedal boards with other from the device itself? Uh, no, I don't think so. Hmm. You mean like? Um, well, from a Mud device, you can you can browse pedal board f online ah. and, that, and load them in the device and. No, no, on. I think uh, here we got the patch storage connection. And I think the mod uh, platform you're talking about is, is closed source or, yeah, dependent on the mod devices. I, I don't know. <laughs> Any more questions? So, um, audience question. Not, not mine. Um, can you simulate feedback? <laughs> <laughs> like, like holding your guitar in front of the amp. Um, I haven't. Do you have an idea? Do you, you don't have to do it right <laughs> now, but do you have maybe a, um, an, a lead that we can follow? I don't know what what you <laughs> what you're meaning. If, if you have a real amp and you go yeah. with your ah, guitar ah, okay. in front of the amp. It creates feedback. Um, I think this is more like a physical um, condition. Um, it depends on your on your gain and on on the physics of your of your um, cabinet and mm -hmm. so on. I think it's possible, like it is with other M's, uh, but you might have to tinker a bit around and and find the settings. But I think this is independent of of if you're if you're using um, virtual effects or analog digital outboard. Ah, but, but if you don't have the the amp cabinet in reality, but you're playing with headphones, so there's no no speaker. So yeah, maybe maybe you can trigger it like a simulated software um, with I, I don't know press on the foot pedal. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know of, of, of any... Okay, um, maybe, maybe, but, 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 oh, yeah, maybe that's a common problem, uh, we do it like this, oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Nothing. Nothing online? Okay. So I think that was it. Thank okay, you, Sven. Thanks. <laughs>